Hello! Welcome, or welcome back. Um, it's been a very, very, very long time. Um, simply because I'm so lazy. <laughs> we have quite the to-do list. I will be making stickers, packing orders, showing you guys how I make my stickers, and um, cutting more prints, illustrated art prints. So a lot of people have been asking me to show my um, sticker making process with my Cricut Maker 3 and my um, printer. So I will be showing you guys, really treat you guys to a lengthy video, just explaining how I go through everything. I'm trying not to look at myself and look at the camera. I think, I think I'm gonna start off by doing some cleaning because it's a bit, it's a bit crazy in here with all the orders and all the stickers. <laughs> yeah, first step, we're gonna clean and then get right into the tutorial. Now that we're all cleaned up, we're good to start with the Cricut machine. So these are all the devices and machinery I'll be using today to make these stickers. I have my iPad Air 4th generation, my 2020 MacBook Air, my Cricut Maker 3, and my Epson EcoTank ET2800. First, you must start with the design. I personally like to sketch my designs in my sketchbook or sometimes I do it digitally. Um, but usually in the sketchbook first. So these were the drawings of the sharks that I did. And although I didn't really like it, I decided to go into Procreate on my iPad and draw digitally on top of them and create a fun theme for the sticker sheet. So now we'll just go into Procreate. In a new canvas, I took my designs. After scanning them using the flatbed scanner that's built into my printer, I then imported the image into Procreate and started to draw on top of them. What you want to do is remove the background, so I actually like to erase the sketchbook page but leaving the, the drawings slash illustrations behind. Once you have all your elements in this one canvas, you want to download it as a PNG just by clicking the wrench tool, share, PNG, and then you want to click save image. We then want to go into a new canvas. And I like my sticker sheets to be four times six inches, so we're just gonna change this in the settings by clicking the, in the wrench tool, then canvas, crop and resize, settings, and we're actually gonna change this to inches, four times six, and press done. As you can see, we now have the size of your sticker sheet. Remember the images that you saved before? Now we're going to add them into this canvas using the wrench tool. Insert a photo. This screen should pop up. You just want to find... You just want to find the images that you saved before and place them on the canvas. And then with this, you can now use the selection tool and move your drawings around to anywhere you'd like to position them on the sheet. You can also change the background color to any color you would like. Now that you have your sticker sheet design done, you want to export them into Design Space, and I'll show you exactly how to do that. In order to get the actual cut of the individual stickers with kiss cut, that means that it's not going all the way through the paper, but just, just enough to hit the backing. Right now, I have three layers the individual stickers, the writing, and the background color. We first want to export the individual stickers. In order to do that, you want to hit the wrench tool, hit share, hit PNG, and hit save image. And then the same with the background. 
I personally like to airdrop my designs to my laptop just because I find it easier to work in Cricut Design Space on my laptop. So now that we're in Cricut Design Space, you just want to click New Project. And then we're going to add a shape, specifically the square with the harsh corners, just to create a guideline for our boundaries for the print then cut. So now that we have the square that is 6.82 times 8.96 inches. Make sure it's in inches because I made this mistake before and it's very frustrating when everything's in centimeters. <laughs> So this is basically the area that we have to work with when it comes to our sheet of paper. And the sheet of paper is 8.5 by 11, just simple uh, US letter size. Um, so now we're going to upload, can you guys see that? My, my mouse is down here. <laughs> we're going to upload our designs. We're gonna upload image and we're just gonna drag them. Drag them in like so. I like to choose complex, continue. We don't need a transparent background, so we can just apply and continue. And then you want to click print then cut image. And we're just gonna do shark stickers background. And then put them in stickers and upload. Now we just want to select the, both the foreground and the background of your sticker sheet and press add to canvas. As you can see, it's very, very big. So what we actually want to do is scale it down to the size that we want to print and cut. So we're gonna change the width to four, and it should, if you press enter, it should change that to six because we have the lock aspect ratio on. There we go. Now we have our little sticker sheet you want to toggle with the visibility of the square select both of these the foreground and the background and click attach at the bottom here you can't see it <laughs> oh my gosh see this is why i don't make tutorials guys you want to right click and click attach now these two are moving together because we've placed them together like pretend like you just made a sandwich they're now a peanut butter sandwich they're now attached they're stuck to each other now if we bring back the square or rectangle whatever <laughs> floats your boat now we bring back the rectangle that we had before you can see that we still have plenty of space on here what actually could happen if we rotate this by 90 degrees which if you click more rotate you just type in 90 enter you can fit two on here and now we want to get rid of the square again so we're going to toggle the visibility click the little eyeball and now we have these two shark sticker sheets per one page of sticker paper we're going to select both of these we're going to align just so it's easier to hand cut it we're going to align it to the left and then we're going to select both of them once again, right click, and click attach. So this is just a sandwich on top of another sandwich. Now both of them are one body that can move together. Now that we have our designs done, we can actually go ahead and make this. And let me show you the materials I use for my stickers, because I know a lot of people have been asking about that. Um, nothing too special, I got everything off of Amazon or just stuff I already had. Um, yeah, let's go. For sticker paper, I like to use Glossy Vinyl Sticker Paper. And this is the brand I use, Homesto, 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 I don't know. <laughs> um, so it's eight and a half by 11 sheets. It, it works great with my printer, so this is the sticker paper I like to use. For the vinyl coating that I put on my stickers, I like to use either this roll of clear vinyl, which I got from Amazon, I'm not too sure of the brand. And then I also like to use Avery self adhesive laminating sheets, which work pretty great, honestly. Like they don't scratch and it's super easy to apply because as you can see, it has a 
like a cut here it makes it has a grid as well it hits the lighting super easy and what's this what's this a peel like a peel tab it's it's super convenient super nice as for cutting your stickers you can either use just a pair of scissors like these these ones are from westcott they're pretty good they work like i mean they're scissors they work like scissors they work pretty well or to get a nice straight edge, you can also invest in a paper trimmer. This is the one I use. It's from Cricut. And it simply just has a small little blade, small blade hidden behind there. And then you just, you know, it, <laughs> it's really fun to use and easy to use. So I tend to use it more than the pair of scissors. I'll also be using the squeegee that I got from Amazon. I think it came in a pack of two. Um, which was very convenient since I like to alternate. Now we're just gonna pull out the Cricut machine because I have it tucked in the corner here. Make sure there's enough space behind the machine for the mat to come out and simply open it. Coolio. Now we're just gonna hit the green make button and then the screen should pop up with a little digital Cricut mat. <laughs> um, I'm actually not using the mats by Cricut today, um, simply because they're really, really expensive. So I'm just gonna be using these mats that I found off of Amazon. And I personally like to use the light grip mat. The first option is to send to printer. And usually I like to turn off the bleed and then press print. But because I already have some printed in advance, we're gonna click I've already printed. As for the material that you have to choose, it actually depends on your Cricut, but the settings that I like to use is for sticker sheets is sticky note and then more pressure. So it actually cuts a little bit deeper than it would normally do. So this is the mat we're gonna use. This is the brand that I'm using. I personally would not recommend it simply because the adhesive does wear out quite quickly, um, but it, it does the job. So we're gonna be using it today. You want to make sure this is the sheet that I've already printed using my printer. It has the registration marks, which the Cricut will use to like align itself with the sticker sheet and cut it properly. So make sure the registration marks are visible and printed on four corners of the sheet. Now what you want to do is align the corner of your sticker paper with the corner of the sticky part of the mat. So we're just going to put that on there. It doesn't have to be completely perfect, but try to get it as close as you possibly can. And then once you have it in position that you're comfortable with, we're going to take the squeegee and just press it down onto the mat. Now you want to take your sheet of um, vinyl or the roll, just trim a piece off and then you have a sheet like this. Place it on top of your design, your sticker sheets. Take a pen, like this one. I just use red because red's my favorite color. <laughs> and we're gonna mark off where it ends at the bottom and the top. So as you can see, we just marked off where the sticker sheet ends and where we need to cut the vinyl. So now that we have that done, we can take the vinyl off. And this is the light grip map. So it actually is meant for paper and really thin materials. So it's not too, too sticky that you it, the paper gets stuck on there. Um, so we can easily remove paper. You wanna take the paper trimmer and just trim it down. And do it again on the opposite side. And just like that, we have the trimmed vinyl that we need for the sticker sheets. So what I like to do, this, this is a bit hard to do on camera and the first couple of times, but you just want to peel little little tab 
uh, if I can, peel the little tab that's at the very top. And then once you have that done, you want to flip it over so the glossy side is up. Align it to the bottom of your sticker sheets and gently lay it on top. You then want to take your squeegee and push it in place. And then you want to pull this. It's really hard to do with long nails, but we're, we're managing. Oh, pull that. <laughs> and do this. I don't know how to put it in words, but it's a very, very simple move. Once you get the hang of it, make sure it's adhered well onto sticker sheets or just using a bit of pressure now and applying the vinyl on top. And now your mat is prepared. I just realized that <laughs> I wasn't filming, but we loaded the mat into the Cricut machine um, by pressing the <laughs> two arrow button, the load button, and now we're going to press the play button to actually start cutting. So if we press it, it's going to do its thing. <laughs> Measure the mat. It's going to start scanning those registration marks that we talked about earlier. Once it's done scanning, it's going to start cutting. Are you kidding me? I wasn't filming. Okay, I give up. I give up. I give up. beautiful people so I'm back this is day two this is day two of my sticker disaster <laughs> um, we have some work to do so we're gonna get that done first and then we're gonna make a bunch of stickers and pack a bunch of orders so stay tuned for the fun let's get it hello and welcome to the Q&A portion of this video. Um, I asked you guys on Instagram if you had any questions you'd like me to answer, and I received quite a few questions. So hopefully I can answer as many as I possibly can in this Q&A portion. The first question is, how much time do you dedicate to your business slash how do you stay disciplined? I used to put in endless hours into my business, especially when I was first starting up. Um, I eventually realized this would lead to terrible burnout, so I created a loose work schedule for myself. I start most days around 10 a.m., taking breaks whenever I feel like it. While working, I pack orders, answer emails, create stickers, etc. Um, it's hard to measure how much time exactly, since I work sporadically throughout the week, but I would say at least five hours a day. When it comes to staying disciplined, I think it's mostly just making a schedule and sticking to it. Um, it does take a lot of hard work to get to that point where you're able to stay on a work schedule that you put out for yourself. But once you realize its benefits, it's a lot easier to stay motivated. Next question is, how long does it take for you to make products for shop launches or art markets? Oh my, okay, so between creating the sticker design to physically producing the stickers, this process can take a couple hours. Um, that would be drawing, formatting, printing, cutting, all the fun stuff. It's a bit more manageable because I create art on a daily basis anyways. Unless I'm creating artwork for the sole purpose of a sticker design, um, I usually already have artwork made to make into a sticker. But um, it can be a lengthy process at first, but once you get the hang of it, it's not, it's not as time consuming. Next question, how do you ship the stickers? I live in Canada, so I use the Canada Post Letter Mail um, service, which is basically stamped mail. And the only downside to this is that it's a very long shipping process, but it's very affordable. Um, 
not as time consuming as weighted shipping with tracking but um i feel like for stickers letter mail is very appropriate since it's small it's flat it's paper uh, yeah letter mail question number four uh tips for building social media presence slash platform as an artist isabella i have two words for you consistency and genuineness posting consistently and consistently does not necessarily mean constantly so please do not feel like you have to post every hour of the day um just keep a schedule a loose schedule or just a, a little format in your head that you would post maybe once a week once a month hopefully not once a year <laughs> talking to you dan howell just kidding love you dan anyways um as i was saying consistency is important as well as staying genuine to who you are and what you do um there's nothing worse than trying to please the algorithm all the time and hopping on every single trend when it's not truly something you want to do i really wish i could have answered more questions i honestly plan to answer about 10 um, we got through four, but that's okay. There's more videos, more opportunities in the future. Hope you enjoyed that Q&A section. I will see you in a later portion of the video.